Okay guys, <clears throat> this video is to introduce you to the breakout box, something that we're going to use in lab number two. Now a breakout box is used all the time to configure for a serial cable like an RS-232 cable and an example this is an RS-232 breakout box. We use it to um, configure cables for a unique uh, equipment requirement. So. As an example, in lab number two, we're going to be communicating with a cell 321 relay and Schweitzer will publish a specific cable map that's required to make that connection from a PC or a terminal to that uh, relay. And we can use the breakout box to construct that cable or configure that cable so that we can communicate. And so a breakout box is used for cable, unique cable configuration as per a manufacturer's requirements. And it can also be used to troubleshoot an RS-232 connection because it breaks out all of the signals or pins in the connection and allows you to check logic levels. It allows you to use equipment like an oscilloscope or something like that to access the pins or the signals within the connection. So that's what it's used for. And so for lab two, we're going to use it to configure a cable uh, specific to uh, Schweitzer's requirements to talk to the 321. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that the breakout box is 25 pins. Now, the reason for that is that um, the, the device is made so it can work it's backwards compatible with any device. So we know that really old devices could be 25 pins, so we need to be able to work with those too. So we have a 25 pin example. But what it does is it adds another sort of level of complexity to any exercises that are for nine pin cables. And most of the equipment you're gonna be working with these days is going to be nine pins. And the example today for 321, is going to be the same thing, nine pin cable. So what we need to do is understand that there's a conversion between nine pin and 25. So um, I'll show the conversion table when I produce this video right alongside of this that shows the um, nine to 25 pin conversion. So it means that if you're looking at one of the nine pin values and where to find one of those nine pins inside this breakout box once you connect a, a cable, um, you have to access it as a 25 pin value in order to make that connection. So, you know, pin, if I look at a, at a conversion table, I can tell that pin five on a nine pin is equal to pin seven on a seven pin. That's signal ground. So if I want to make a straight through connection on pin five, I have to make sure that I have a straight through connection on pin seven here because pin seven is equivalent to pin five. So that's the first thing we need to understand. Now, take a look at this adapter. This is an adapter to change us from 25 pins to nine pins, right? So once we plug this in, then this becomes nine pins over here and it converts it to 25 to connect to the breakout box. The thing we need to understand is this um, adapter is wired exactly like that table where pin five goes to pin seven over here and the rest of them are all translated as well. So um, we need to understand that because if we don't, then we'll get all messed up when we go to use this. Okay. Now it's not, the confusion doesn't end there. Um, when we look at these switches, we've got three banks of switches. Now those switches are used to, instead of having to have you put a jumper in there, those switches are used to make a straight through connection because many cables have straight through requirements. So if that's the case, instead of having to put jumpers in there, um, it allows you to give it a nice solid connection with switches. But look at, there's only three banks of eight switches. That gives you 24 pins, but it's a 25 pin example. So that means one of the pins does not have a switch. And as it turns out, the very top pin, the protective ground, which will always be um, connected from one end to the other on a cable, um, it doesn't have a switch. It'll always be connected. So the thing we have to understand is look at the pin numbering. The pin numbering doesn't start until pin two. And when we look at pin two, that's our first switch. 
So now, again, it gets somewhat confusing. It means that if we want a straight through connection on pin two, we're gonna close switch one. Switch one. If we want a straight through connection on pin six, we're gonna close switch five. We have to understand that. Closing switch four is going to be um, giving us a straight through connection on five. Okay, so that's important. You need to understand that about using this or you'll be confused. So what does it mean then for any type of crossover connections? Well, crossover connections can be done with jumpers. So th that's what those sockets are for on each side. You can install a jumper there in order to do a crossover. So if you want to do a two or three two to three crossover, like you would for a null cable, you'd have to have both of those switches open, of course. If they were closed, that would be a straight through connection and you would defeat a crossover. So you'd have to have both of those switches open first, and then you could use a um, jumper to go from pin two, which would be the second socket down, to pin three, which would be the third socket down on the other side, and then do the same from pin two over there to pin three here, okay? You'd use jumpers to do any crossovers. Now, for loopbacks, like I talked about before, where sometimes handshaking signals are looped back, then you would use a jumper as well. So you could say, let's say you want to loop back pin eight to pin nine. You'd just be able to loop it back right inside the breakout box with a jumper by putting a jumper in there, okay? So, um, that's really um, what the breakout box looks like, and those are some of the things you really have to be aware of when it comes to um, using the box, is that there's only 24 switches, pin one is hardwired in, you can't do anything with it, and pin two starts with switch one. So that means the very last switch is pin 25, and uh, they're numbered from 2 through 25 to give you a total of 24 switches. Okay? Um, so, yeah, that's the, the breakout box. Okay, guys, so here's a uh, 25 to 9 pin cable. Okay? Now, this is a cable you'd use on a breakout box. The 25 pin side you'd install here on the breakout box. Right? And then that gives you nine pins over here. Now, just like this adapter that I have on the other end, what it means is this cable right here that's nine on one end and 25 on the other only has nine pins that appear on this side of the connector. There's only nine pins in there. It's a straight through cable from here to there based on the fact that this nine is being converted to 25 pin. Now, the, obviously the real you know, uh, confusing part is, it's not as if pin two on here shows up as pin two in here. Pin two has to be converted to its 25 pin equivalent first before you can tell where it's gonna appear inside here. But it's important when you're using a breakout box, if you're converting to nine pins like we do here, that this is a straight through cable. You don't want any specific crossovers or anything in this cable. It's just gonna add a whole other level of confusion to the exercise. You always wanna connect nine to 25 pins straight through examples like here, this adapter, or this cable, okay? So that's an important part of using a breakout box as well. Okay, so here's where we have um, a cable from the 321 manual and um, this is a cable that we're going to need to configure or build using the breakout box with the understanding that the breakout box is 25 pins, right? So notice how this is a 9 pin cable, so it's 9 pins on both ends and it's going to be connecting to uh, some device, a cell 2020 and the cell 321. I'm just using this as an example. For lab number two, you'll look up the proper cable and build it using the breakout box. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're following the breakout box uh, best practice document there. And the first thing it says is to consult the manufacturer's cable map requirement. And here we have it. This is our requirement, what we see here. This cable 272A. And then it says convert any nine pin numbers to 25 pin numbers. So these are all nine pin numbers here. 
these are all 9 pin numbers. They need to be converted to 25 pin because the breakout box is a 25 pin breakout box. So let's just have, let's just say in the middle here is where we're going to have the breakout box and we need to convert each one of these pin numbers to its 25 pin equivalent. So let's start with pin, pin 2, 9 pin 2. 9 pin 2 is equal to pin 3. So you're going to put 3 there. All right? What is 3 equal to? It's equal to 2. If we go to 5, what's 5 equal to? 5 is equal to 7. Right? And then we have this 7, 8 loop back. This 7, 8 loop back is equal to pins 4 and 5. So you're going to have a loop back inside the breakout box for pins 4 and pins 5. Okay, so now we follow the same thing on the other end. Pin 3 is equal to pin 2. Pin 2 is equal to pin 3. Pin 5 is equal to 7. And then we have our 7, 8 loop back here, which is equal to pins 4 and 5 in the breakout box. Pins 4 and 5 need to be looped back in the breakout box. Okay, so once we built this simple cable, using the breakout box but remembering that the breakout box is 25 pins then once we connect it we should have communications between the cell 2020 and the cell 321 and if we had to we could just ring it out uh, end to end to make sure that we had uh, the proper cable now remember when we ring it out we'd be ringing out these pin numbers we would expect because of our our as an example we, we want to uh, make sure we have a straight through connection on pin 5. Well, that would be done by closing the switch inside the breakout box that's going to give us a straight through connection on pin 7. Right? So then if we rung out the cable end to end pin, uh, um, for a, the 9 pin cable, we would find that we have direct continuity from pin 5 to pin 5 because we closed the switch corresponding to pin 7 in the breakout box. Now remember, for the switches in the breakout box, the switch numbers are one less than the pin. So that means that pin 9, or sorry, pin 7 would be equal to switch 6. Right? So pin 7 is equal to switch 6. All right. So um, now if we just... Um, look at that in terms of what um, the, the breakout box looks like then we should be good to go all right so here we see the um, pin number assignments for 25 pins shown in the middle of this uh, cable map as the breakout box so again remember each one of the nine pin assignments that you see here have been converted to their 25 pin assignments in the middle here where the breakout box is. And so if we look at that then, we're, the first thing we're doing following the best practices of the breakout box is to um, close any switches that correspond to straight through connections. So if we follow each connection here, this isn't a straight through connection, that's a crossover. This is a crossover as well. Let's go to the next one. Seven to seven is indeed a straight through connection. So it means that inside the breakout box, we need to close the switch that corresponds to pin seven. Now, if you recall, protective ground, this first one is permanently connected without the use of a jumper. It's hardwired in the breakout box itself to have a connection from one end to the other and not a switch. It doesn't need a switch. So it means that pin two, which is our first pin with a switch is switch one, all right? So that means that our pin two, which is right there, the only way you can connect it right across as a straight through is to close switch one. Okay, so you get the idea now. So what is it we're wanting to do? We're wanting to have a straight through connection on pin seven. So if we want a straight through connection on pin seven, we have to close switch six right so what it does is it allows us to have a straight through without using a jumper using a switch and if we close this switch and that's that's pushing it to the right if we close that switch that's going to give us our straight through connection on our uh, pin 7 
So that's actually the only straight through connection we have in this example. So what does it mean from there? It means we need to use jumpers to do crossovers. But of course, we have to make sure that the switches are all open. Otherwise, that will defeat the crossover. So all the switches are open except for pin uh, switch six corresponding to pin seven. And now we do our two to three crossover because here's our first one, three on this side to two on the other. So three on this side to two on the other, right? Then it's two on this side to three on the other, two on this side to three on the other. That gives us our transmit receive crossover, okay? Now, all we have to do is look after these loopbacks. So that's a four to five loopback on each side, right? So now you, you locate um, pin four and you loop it back to pin five. Then you do the same on the other side. You find pin four and you loop it back to pin five. And that's done through the use of a, a jumper. Once that's um, connected like that, all you're doing is connecting a 25 to nine pin cable here as a straight through cable and one on the other end as either an adapter or a cable. Connect it to your equipment, in this case, a cell 2020 and the cell 321 relay. And you should have operating communications between the two. OK, so that should be enough of a <clears throat> introduction, enough of a familiarization tutorial and lesson on the breakout box for you to go forward and uh, complete the, um, the configuration of the cable required to communicate between your DTE or your terminal and the cell 321.